Welcome viewers to another edition of Brave Namibia, where we celebrate both ordinary and extraordinary Namibians. In our first clip today we head to Rehoboth, where Jereen Hoff caught up with former colleague Evani van Weyck, who spoke about what keeps her going. Hi, my name is Ivani van Weyck, I'm 23 years old. I'm a student at the Namibia University of Science and Technology, where I'm studying Bachelor of Communications. Um, so I grew up here in Rehoboth and um, I'm still here currently. I went to primary school, high school and reaching grade 12 I did not know who, what I wanted to be. So I got an internship opportunity at Namibia Media Holdings and ended up doing an internship there for a year as an intern journalist. Now this was completely out of my comfort zone so I was there, an introvert, just out in the world. And um, when my internship ended, I decided, okay, now I need to do something new now. So I left the internship and then for a year, I was just um, doing another gap year because yet no idea what to study. And after that, in that year, I started doing modeling, I took part in my first pageant where I got the title of Miss Top Model, which I took very literally. So um, after that, I decided, okay, let me try out for Vintage Fashion Week. And that's what I did. I tried out for Vintage Fashion Week, and it was such an amazing experience. And I really, really loved that so much that I decided, okay, now this is going to become my thing. So it, I would always take pictures with my friends. and. And so 2021, I finally decided, okay, I need to get my degree. I need to start studying for something. And I went on the website at NAST and I just picked the first thing I saw, which was communications. And I was so scared the whole time I had picked the wrong thing because I didn't like journalism that much. So how would I be in the same environment where I'd have to interact with people and stuff like that? But luckily, um, three years later, I'm doing the kind of job that I actually like, and I'm very satisfied with that. And then again, so I had an internship opportunity once again um, at the River Town Council where I was an intern in the public relations office. So that's what I did for like three months. Then they appointed me temporarily and now I'm an administrator at the office of the CEO, which is really exciting also, dealing with something different every single day. Um, I think I skipped a part where last year I decided, okay, now, now I'm gonna enter Miss Namibia because it's been a lifelong dream of mine to do something like that. And so I entered, I was so scared because I'm not a talkative person. I don't have that personality that's all outgoing. But it was the most amazing experience, meeting all those people, being able to walk on a national stage and just do something that I or young Ivani wouldn't have ever imagined could be possible. So I was really grateful for that opportunity. I did not place, but it was definitely a learning experience. And I feel like my self-confidence skyrocketed at some point. And now I'm just more confident and I don't really need assurance that much anymore and I think that's something that young people need to um, really get more of because life will push you but you need to be stable in yourself before you can give up on things. My community project. Okay so in 2021 I was going through a really difficult time at home and things were just not not doing anything. Um, so I decided I'm going to start a food drive where I would prepare food and take it out to people in the less fortunate um, parts of our town. So I did that in 2021, 2022 and along the way I, I had to stop because there was not really any sponsorships coming in. I could not handle it because at that time I was unemployed as well. So. It was, it was difficult for me to leave it and I actually, I think every day of how I can restart the project or if at least I can join another project 
where I can lend a helping hand also because I know difficult times are something that everything everybody goes through and I just feel that if I can make like a small difference that would be like it could mean the world to people out there so yes that is what I did and I think um, there needs to be something restarted pretty soon because I think of my people, I call them my children every day and I would really like to reconnect with them as well. How do you balance everything in your life? Um, the balance part. Okay, so I... It's difficult. Like I mentioned earlier, I have to go to the gym in the morning. I'm not very committed to that yet. <laughs> then I come to work at 8 a.m leave work at 5 because my classes are starting quarter past 5 until 9 p.m. Then I have to do assignments and yeah, it's difficult. But at least I have some amazing people in my life who are very supportive. So if I want to see my friends, they're only a phone call away. And they are also busy with their lives, their careers. And they know that balance needs to come and the support is always there when you feel like you're breaking down just call your friend and everything's sorted out so i'm pretty happy as it is now and i think being busy is a good thing because it gives you a sense of purpose instead of just laying around so i have two role models at this time um, firstly my mom she's an amazing woman and she really has been like my cheerleader my entire life she she believes I can do anything and I am really grateful for that because not many people have that so yes that's my mom and then um, it was my previous supervisor that, that I had when I was working at Namibia Media Holdings Ms. Octavia Tibes I always tell her that when when we are talking um, she's really she's such a beautiful person she's a leader she's taught me so much I think if I had started work at any other place I wouldn't have had like the etiquette and the responsibility that I have now because all of those things she taught me and I'm, I'm pretty sure she's going to become like the first lady of the president someday because she is really truly amazing yeah furthermore um, I don't know what the future holds, but hopefully um, I'll be graduating next year, just doing things which I didn't think was possible. And at the same time, working, studying, taking care of myself, balancing life, it's difficult, but I'm thinking at least I get to take care of my mom. And you know, it gives you that independent woman feel to be able to do something. I'm very grateful for my job because not long ago I was depressed and unemployed at home and I know how difficult that is. So to anyone who's out there in that situation, I really hope that you do not give up hope because there will be a light at the end of the tunnel. You just need to keep hoping and you need to keep applying for jobs. Me, as I stand here, I haven't gotten a single invitation for an interview in such a long time. But I am positive and I know that who I am as a person and who I put out there into the world is going to attract the, all the right people into my life so that I can reach the heights that I know I can reach. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Newsprint Namibia is a web offset printing operation that specializes in the printing of newspapers and commercial inserts. We are the leaders in our industry with the highest quality print work and the shortest turnaround time from computer to print and delivery anywhere in the country daily. 
Newsprint was established mainly as a newspaper print company, but had to diversify its business to do commercial printing as required in the market. We print commercial inserts, previously printed in South Africa, in the shortest possible time. We, as an organization, also started printing workbooks for our education system and will also print textbooks for the Namibian market. For more information, please contact print at newsprint.com. Next, Michael Kayunde chats to actor, artist and songwriter Diolini. Hello Namibia, welcome to another exciting edition of Brave Namibia. This is a platform where we get to shine a light on individuals that are thriving within their respective industries. And today joining us is an actor, is an artist, a songwriter. She's so many things. I'm talking about none other than Diolini. Welcome to the show. Please uh, introduce uh, yourself to the show and what you do. I, I tried, but uh, <laughs> I want you to do it yourself. Okay. Um, as you heard, my name is Diolini. I'm a singer-songwriter based in the coast, but you know I have to fly into Bintuk once in a while. Fly. <laughs> um, I am an actress as well, and I've been doing this for about eight years roughly so um yeah i'm very excited to be here and talk a little bit about that yeah uh you mentioned you've been doing it for eight years yeah. let's start at the beginning you know when did i don't want to just limit you to music so i would say pop culture yeah. bug beat you sorry please when did the pop culture bug beat you um i think when i was really young i remember it might have been the age of 10 where I would nag my mom telling her that this is what I want to pursue. I want to pursue music, you know, and I'd have all these different like loopholes that I try and, you know, create in my mind to convince her that this is what I should do. And obviously that failed, but I pursued it anyway. You know, you have to, you have to bring out the inner rebel if you really believe in something. And around the age of 18, 19, when I finished high school, which was in 2015, that's when I officially went into it and was like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, having started at a very young age, I'm sure there are people that you look up to. So please tell us some of those influences. Um, yeah, so when I was younger, I'd listen to Radio Energy religiously, like on Sundays and after 10 p.m. I think that's when they'd play the R&B playlist. And that's really when I fell in love with music. And that's, so those were the sounds that like was creating this world for me that I wanted to be a part of. So people like Kenny G, um, who's a saxophonist, Boys to Men were a big um, influence at the time. And then when I grew older, Sade, um, Minnie Riperton is the latest influence. So just like really soulful artists, India Ari, you know, the Erika Badus, those are some of my favorites. No local? Local, um, I think Tequila. Tequila, her, her voice, her tone, she had such beautiful control of it. I would say Tequila for sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you do, currently you do have, you know, one body of work under your belt, which is uh, the Relics of the Sun. Yeah, Relics of the Sun. Uh, the EP that you dropped, I think, two years, three years back? Two years ago, I think. To How is the response to that? Because your music so unique, you know. I, I don't think we do have someone making that type of music in within our music space. How did people re react uh, and respond to that body of work? Um, they were really positive. People loved it, you know. I I was really happy with the response that I got on it. Um, just a lot of people really encouraging me to just keep going. Um, yeah, I, it was it was inspiring. It's it's a lot of that energy is what I used to to make this album. So, yeah. Yeah, which leads to my next question. You know, adding to your um, catalog, you yeah. are dropping a new album. You know, you dropped an EP. Mm -hmm. Now you are actually dropping an album. Yeah. Uh, please take us through the making of this album. You know, what sonic direction did you take? what informed it and um, what it's all about all around. Um, so I 
after Relics, I took some time away, um, and I really, I really got in touch with my roots, so to speak, during that time. Um, and it took me back to the sound I grew up listening to, and that's really the style of music that I love making. You know, I have nothing against house music; I love it. It's, it was also one of my biggest influences, but um, with this with this album, I wanted to bring out that like softer, slower, more you know sensual side to my music. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited because I really got to express that and explore that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, we've spoken about music, but you know when I introduced you and when you introduced yourself, you mentioned other skills and activities that you know you are involved in. Let's start with acting. You know, yeah. you are also an actor, an yeah. actress. Um, how did that love come about for acting? I think it was birthed by social anxiety, to be honest. Um, I didn't know how to speak to people when I was younger. I didn't know how to like really just get out of my shell and connect. I was really shy. So um, acting was something that helped me a lot, especially with like presenting stuff like orals in school. You mm -hmm. know, we all did those and those that was just like the most anxiety like inducing um, <laughs> experience for me. So I brought out acting and the class would love it, the teachers would love it. And that's, I kind of just ran with that. Mm. Yeah. You have been featured in one of, you know, the most prominent Namibian films, you know, in modern Namibia, if I can say it yeah. like that, Land of the Brave. Um, how is it like being on a set like that? It was beautiful. I think that was my first feature film. Um, the cast, the crew, the director, they were so gentle and nurturing, you know, and I think artists were very sensitive people um, and we thrive when people treat us that way. So it was a, it was a beautiful set. It was for my first time mm -hmm. doing a feature film. It, it, it's still memorable to this day. Yeah. Uh, how was the, the character that you portrayed different to your actual self? Um, she was. Or how is it? How is she also similar to to you? Because you you were able to you know embody that character and you know make it yourself. What so, what what similarities did did you guys share, and what differences did you guys share? Okay, so I'll start with the differences. I think she was she was um, a bit more, I guess, like rebellious or brave. I would say maybe to. Um, well, I think as much as I said this is the, the difference, it's also the same because I was kind of a rebel when it came to doing the things that I love and the character, she had to be a bit of a rebel to pursue something different, to try and achieve a better life for herself. So um, I think in that sense, we're the same. I just would never like shoot someone. <laughs> so I think that's the, that's, I would say that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the similarities you said you are all brave. Well, yeah, brave, I, I think, I think, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Just, just in terms mm -hmm. of her doing what she has to do, you know, trying to get a better life, trying to get out of her hometown, in those ways, I definitely say we're the same. Yeah, um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I would not like to, you know, just limit you to being um, a singer. I would call you as an entertainer yeah. because you double in, you know, various aspects of the entertainment space. What do you think of our current entertainment landscape? You know, the show business in Namibia. What can we do better? What are we, you know, doing okay? Um, I think. You know, soul artists, I think I'd speak that directly to soul artists. I think we should feel confident enough to take up space here. A lot of the times, like even when I was making the album, someone said, aren't you scared? Aren't you scared that, you know, people won't receive it? And I was like, I don't care because I don't make art for people to receive it. I make art because that's what I thrive in, you know, that's what I feel most confident and amazing in. So I think we shouldn't be afraid to take up space. And I think Namibians should open themselves up to different sonic palettes, you know. I think the hip hop and the, the kwaitos speak really loud. And they are, I guess, louder genres, but I think there's a lot to explore when it comes to the softer side of things. And uh, yeah, I think just like more artists believing in themselves and taking themselves seriously and really going for what they believe in. 
All right. That's it. Before we wrap it up, uh, you are you know dropping a new album, uh, having the premiere on Friday, uh, the 18th of um, August. Yeah. And uh, we do know that you are going to have your album on vinyls. Uh, when can people expect to actually purchase uh, the a album, vinyl. the vinyl? So I haven't set an official date yet, but I'm looking at September. So we're looking at September for vinyl purchases. Obviously, I'll, I'll announce it and I'll do a whole thing so everyone can know um, where to reach out to, where to get the vinyls. Um, but for now, we're having the showcase, which is on the 18th, today. Yeah. <laughs> today. Uh, we're having the, the first showcase for the album today. And it's going to be at Etc. 100 bucks gets you in. So make, make your way there. It's going to be beautiful. Well, there you had it, Diolini taking us through her, you know, entertainment career. Please check her out at Etc. as she launches her debut album. Thank you so much and we wish you all the best with your career. Thank you. E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing, bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. For more information, contact events at nmh.com.na. Thank you for tuning in today. If you know of someone you feel should feature on our show, please contact us at brave at synergy.com.na.